Welcome back to Dial H for Heroclix. This is episode 263. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Once again, let's go. Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com, and you can still use code DIAL5 at checkout for 5% off of your order. Uh, As promised, this is part two of our Origins experience, and right next to me is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. What we are going to do this episode is basically just... It's going to be more like a conversation. Uh, our experiences over Origins since the last episode was entirely about news. Uh, the games we played, the people we met, just everything that made us happy. And that's what we normally start us off with, what made us happy this week. So here it is. Calder, do you want to start? Oh, man. So that's such a hard question. And I know we're like we were like, yeah, it's going to be the next episode. But it, it's really difficult because not only is it so many things, but there's so many great people. Um, I probably played my favorite 300 modern game this week against uh, a listener, Emily, and it was just awesome. We just had it was probably my most fun I've had playing competitive hero clicks. That was like 300 constructed, so that probably made me like the most happy as well as meeting a uh, uh, listener, uh, Don Don Springer. He was awesome. I don't want to blow up his spot and see what else happened, but he, we just had a great interaction. He had a really cool story to tell me, and uh, that was really awesome. So I really appreciated just like meeting listeners and hanging out with everybody this week. So some of the people that we definitely wanted to talk about, uh, I got to meet Michael Fedor. He was really cool and appreciated oh, that. That was like a really great interaction, so we got glad we got to meet him. Uh, Marcus Zilla is also somebody that we got to meet. Uh, really cool. Uh, Emily was already mentioned. Yep. We are going to come back to her here in a little bit at the end of the episode, a little bit of foreshadowing. Um, but probably the best interaction that i'm gonna say i had i don't know about you calder but was definitely with uh, a listener that we got to spend a lot of time with on a like a personal basis this week and that was john carl um just an amazing guy like it it was truly fantastic to be able to meet all of you guys but with john basically he upon meeting this guy he's like oh by the way here's a chase star brand that you wanted and i was like yeah dude this is amazing and he also gave me like some outriders and stuff because he knows i'm a huge black order fan and then that was cool and that was super super appreciated but we we got to play games he he ended up coming back to our hotel room so we could play a game uh, that night, or maybe it was the next night. Oh, uh, it was that night. That night yeah. was pretty fantastic. We we went out to eat with him as well. We'll get into that because that was yeah. something. We t- we said we were going to go to a certain place, and we ended up going. It was, it was fantastic. But just such amazing people that we got to have conversations with. And like they were real conversations. It wasn't just like surface-level stuff um, in a lot of these experiences. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he just, yeah. You can't see it. Calder's just shaking. His like, head yeah, right now. Yeah. So that was that was truly it was humbling and amazing to meet everybody, and that's really what truly made me happy this week. Right on, right on, man. All right. Well, in addition to that, uh, we got to play a bunch of games this week, and we're gonna kind of go through them. I'm gonna let Calder start off with what he wanted to talk about because I, I'm just gonna blatantly say while I did have fun. At Origins playing Battle Royales, I did not do that well. I think I only won first out of like six games or so. Um, I did get a cha- a uh, con exclusive Ambrose, but I did get Proxima Midnight Spear and Corvus's Glaive and stuff like that. So that was okay, but that wasn't what I had the most fun about. But Calder had some stuff that he did while we were actually at Origins. Yeah, so we had uh, Team Nats sealed, which was awesome. I didn't play a lot of the Black Panther set. I don't know how it was all going to happen. But me, Mr. Clicksflix, so James Peters, and uh, Mike Houghton, we all uh, just we made a team, Critical Misdirection. We're like, hey, let's go for it. Go for the money, go for the gold, uh, glory, and all that jazz. So I, you know, you guys know me. I like playing competitively, but I'm not like a really competitive person. So I was just there to have fun, pull some hero clicks. I got, you know, Shifting Focus Lectures, Captain America, had some other stuff on my team, and I was just like, let's go for it. Let's roll some dice. Um, 
pulled out some good wins. Uh, won my first two games, so did Mike, and then we were able to uh, keep it alive that way. And then me and Jamie traded, and then I lost my next two games. He won his next two games, and uh, Mike's back was really hurting because he had uh, uh, won four games in a row. But every single game that I played, four teams, uh, either me or the opponent walked away saying, like, that was one of the most fun I've had playing a, playing a Heroclix game. Uh, competitively or like whatever i know one guy recognized me not from the podcast but from one of happy little hero clicks videos that i popped up in i thought that was really hilarious and then there are a few other guys that were just like man you have really good energy when you're playing like you lost and i'm like yeah i know it's because it doesn't happen uh <laughs> it's not exactly new when it happens so i'm kind of used to it don't worry about it what kind of surprised me was not only did you get a comment like that while you were playing with people completely independent but i was also getting comments like that from people oh, yeah. where they're like man this was a really fun game and you're like compared to what like were you not having fun before and there's so many people that were like well yeah i was playing with this one guy that just ruined it for me and i'm like Guys, that's not the reason to play this game to yeah, win. Yeah, they, they were talking about me. They were like, ah, I played this Calder guy. He just ruined the game for me. No, oh. like, there was, a, oh, there was yeah. one Battle Royale where I, like, I straight up just got demolished, right? Demolished. This guy was clearly in the win, uh, going to win in, like, turn two or three. It was already just guaranteed to happen. And I just looked at him sitting directly across the table, and I was like, you know what, man? You already won, but I'm just going to have fun the rest of the game. So... By the end of the, the match, right, We not only this guy was really cool about it, but the other two players were really cool. We were all just like, well, like rolling, like, bet you won't do this, bet you won't, like, saying things like that. Yeah. And, like, you're rolling, like, all three of us are like, Whoa! like, yelling and stuff. Like, we were, like, one of the loudest tables because, like, we had already known that we lost, but so we just decided to have, like, the most amount of fun that we could possibly have with it. And just the number of people that were, like, that was a really fun game. And I'm like, yeah. guys, I'm so sorry you keep getting stuck with, like, Debbie Downers playing Hero Clicks. So if there's anything, guys, just be good to who you play yeah. with. Just be a really good sport because even if – and when we get into Calder Nice games, you will definitely see where we both had to be really good sport, uh, sports against each other um, because it was just – it's not fun to play against someone who is just a wet <sighs> – blanket it just makes this community horrible so if nothing else and a lot of these people were not listeners but maybe they will be now because it's like we tried to be positive and a good outlook and great sports and we saw a lot of other people that were being great sports as well and it was yeah. fantastic but there were a couple of occasions where we saw stuff that is the exact antithesis of what i just said like some horrible attitudes and i was right. like let's yeah. avoid those uh, but probably one of my favorite games was I always love it when I travel to events and have to play against people that I live like two hours away from or like that I see every other week. So it came down to in top 16 <laughs> for one of my team deals was against Simeon. And I was like, this is going to be the funnest game of the day. And I lost like I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I totally scrubbed out, but his team didn't win. So that was totally a win for me. I love taking credit for stuff like that, which was awesome. So, yeah. Oh, and um, one of my last games where it was just Captain America. There was a big crowd. Like, there's almost never a crowd at any table I play at. Because, like, either the game is over or it's like, oh, cowboy hat guy is here. Or, like, whatever <laughs> it is. And they were like, yo, man, your Captain America was like, wah, leadership. And I'm like, yeah. What else do you, like, what other noises that it make when you make leadership? It's like, wah, I'm the greatest leader in the world. Like, it's awesome. Like, let's have some style with Re these games. Remind me to bring up sound effects here when oh, we start talking yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, by the way, you mentioned Simeon. And yeah, the, Scrub. The, the last Battle Royale that we played, I don't know how this happened. Like, pure luck. The last Battle Royale we played before Origins ran out of Black Panther boosters to even use in Battle yeah. Royales. That's why yeah. it was the last one for us, by the way. Uh, Calder, myself... And Simeon all drew aces to sit down at the That's exact same, table. same oh, table. And I was like, how did this even happen? It's so dumb. <gasps> so, like, we sit down. Calder sitting directly across from me. Simeon sitting to my right. And because of the way the packs were allotted, Calder gets a black bolt with a gem. Simeon gets a black bolt with a gem. And I was like, really? There's, there's no coming back from this at a certain point. Like, I didn't draw very well either. I got destroyed. Calder just wrecked my face all day long. So we're just like, 
What, yeah. And then there's like one guy that isn't part. I forgot. Do you? His last, Brandon. 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 Was yeah. last name Ortega? It was Ortega. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. Uh, he was like he's like these three clearly know each other, and I thought it was gonna come down. I think he probably thought it was just gonna be nothing but collusion. You know, and let's let's wipe this guy out first. Oh and, no. No. I don't even know why they worry too much about collusion. I know why. It can be a thing, sure, but anytime I sit across from somebody I know. That just means I'm gonna gun straight for them. Like, like, <laughs> there's never like, hey, let's work together, and get rid of these scrubs. I'm like, no, man, I'm gonna murder your entire team. And that's, that's what I did. To that's Chris, exactly so what happened. Good. Yeah. So I was like, there was like, I, not only were all of Calder's hits, it was like, yep, that's a hit. Yeah, that's a ten. That's a that's an eleven. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I need a five. Here's a four. Here's yeah. a three. Here's a five. Here's a, I was like, the worst part is like you would damage one of my figures, and then somebody else would kill them and steal your points. It was hilarious. So spoiler, it was actually or- Mr. Ortega that won the battle royale. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, he won, but Calder annihilated me. I made a grand total of ten points off of <laughs> literally picking up a gym with super straight or no, with just uh, it's light, it was a light. So, yeah. so I just smoked somebody with a gym, destroyed it, and got ten points off of. I, it was like one one of the few. No, I didn't even hit did i you didn't hit i didn't you even hit it, but because you used it it got destroyed that, it was like every attack was a miss uh, so uh yeah that's how i got 10 points and dead last and simeon beat me by like 25 points and that was all he got it was it was a bad game but we totally made a uh, total bloodbath it was I, awesome. yeah it was bad for me for calder it was pretty good uh but it totally made up for it in the next match where calder and i played each other which was after a few uh personal games we played back at the hotel so i think now you want to get into yeah, let's do it. the games let's do it. We'll, we're going to try to go through these in like chronological order of what we played so the first night that we showed up calder and i in the hotel room decided to just sit down play a game take our shirts off and choke each other at- no. <laughs> we uh we i played the uh. earth x inhumans and calder played Oh, just a total hodgepodge. It was like Dupe, Lex Luthor, God of Apocalypse, Maximus, the new King Britain, uh, some other stuff like that. It was a total hodgepodge team. Take away from that. Maximus is garbage. Captain Britain is awesome. actually really amazing. Um, the Lex Luthor was... He was so-so. He, he, he was okay. Did his job, yeah. Uh, but the weird thing that I did not expect to happen was the Terra Genesis twice trait to work on Karnak, who gets flurry, and it worked twice on him, so he had 12 attack flurry for 5 damage, and it was just wreck face turn after turn. So MVP was Karnak. Oh, he destroyed. That's crazy. Yeah, that's how that ended up. So that was uh, game one. Inhumans took that one. Uh, I was like, Triton is so bad, and then you hypersonic up your full speed. Deal one damage and then put an action token on somebody. And you're like, Triton's not bad. I'm like, then he instantly gets one shot. I'm like, okay, whatever, sure, Triton. Woo, fish guy. <laughs> he got an attack off. He did, he like, did, sure. At least his, his sculpt is amazing. It's neat. It it's sure is neat, Chris. <laughs> okay, so that was game number one. Game number two was the next day, which was with uh, John Carl. We decided to do this just absolutely ridiculous game back at the hotel room. 2100 points and it was kind of like a boss battle game i was running the living tribunal eternity and infinity infinity versus calder and john and they divided the teams out so they had 1050 points a piece to build their team what did you have on yours so i was running a pseudo avengers we had the quinjet machine man aries captain america from adw the captain america's motorcycle the Iron Man and War Machine duo figure super from the Iron Man set. And I, f- I think that was it. Like, there might have been some other stuff. Did you say Ares? Ares, yeah. Ares, baby. Ares! I, I have never gotten that piece to work as well as what Calder got that piece to work. I don't know what it was. I couldn't hit it the entire game. It was dumb. But... It was actually a fantastic game because some it weird. It was like a super close game. It, it was so weird. It came down to like four figures, I think, on your guys' team. You had um, not X fifty one. You had Ro- Machine Man. I had Machine Man. Had- he was piloting the jet. The jet blew up, and the Machine Man. He was out. He was ready. Here comes the heavy metal. I was so excited for Machine Man. Uh, John was down to an AOU Hulk, AOU Hulk. which w- like he he completely healed it all the way back yeah. to top dial. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to end this. 
But what had happened was Eternity's trait says if a KO, if a friendly figure gets KO'd, you can roll a D6 for him. This was so dumb. I like how we skipped like 45 minutes of the game and got to like where we only had two figures left. Well, I mean, it was just a bloodbath for the most of it. It totally was. It was just like, I didn't have to move the three figures most of the game because their ranges stayed in the same spot. Their ranges were so long that I was just like, wait for them to come to me. Minus one uh, speed, minus one range because of uh, infinity against them. So I was like, yeah, just come to me. It's fine. So I'm like picking pieces off this whole freaking game. Well, I'm getting these verdict tokens with uh, Living Tribunal. And right as Living Tribunal is like dying, I end up with like seven verdict tokens. And then someone kills Living Tribunal. And I was like, man, I didn't even get to do the dumb stuff with the verdicts. Until I rolled for Eternity's trait, man. I rolled a six for eternity i brought back living tribunal it said turn them to their last k last non-ko click instead so i didn't lose the verdict tokens on my turn i roll for the verdict i roll under a seven i get the verdict off and now for the rest of the game basically it was we had to choose someone to deal them one unavoidable damage every every turn turn. and it lasted long enough that it was like it dealt out like uh like eight i think is what we came to quinjet absorbed a lot yeah eight clicks of unavoidable just from that stupid verdict before they finally beat my team so they won but it was such a good game that i'm like i don't even mind i don't even it was awesome it was super awesome it it came down the last character i had was infinity but they had aou hulk plus uh machine man aries and then old man captain america was on his last click from adw yeah that was yeah it was close that was that was such a ridiculous game but it was a really really good game so that was game two um game three i think we didn't even do until we we got back here right yeah yeah so what we did is for the first and only ever time calder and i decided to uh, live stream a game on facebook and on twitter and it was 1 million bc avengers versus america yeah an entire team of basically shields it was just captain america's man captain america's colonel america's steve rogers iron america's yeah. Hydra Americas. So long story short, it turns out when uh, the figures are that good, I mean the BC Avengers are that good, I just I just wrecked. It was so bad. It was bad. It, I had such a good opening volley. I was taking off so many shots, and I was like, I was like, I want to murder this woolly mammoth. It's just gonna, it's gonna go down. And like, someone said there wasn't any synergy. Not gonna blow up his spot, Chris. But, uh, <laughs> so there's no synergy on this team. And I'm like, no, nah, that can't be true. Because all the Avengers have Hydra. The monsters work well together with Captain Venom, Colonel America. You know, I've got people with Avengers and Nova Corps. Like, there's synergy. Is there 12 attack on every figure? Mystics on every figure? You know, or every a couple of figures? Do any of the figures have Power Cosmic? No. Do any of them have 18 or 19 defenses? No. Did Chris's all have like 18, 19, 12 attack, probability control outside? Yes, they yep. did. <laughs> they were, they were it's all just... It's not a- lack of synergy on my part. It's like their kind of base stats are a little... It's kind of like playing against the KC pieces in that their, yeah. their stats are just so high. They're good. And they do weird stuff. Like you, I, every time, I wouldn't say every time, but if you watch the video, it was like, Cotter was trying to use Pulse Swipe. I'm like, no, nope, characters within three squares can't use this. Characters uh. next to me can't use this. Characters within three squares can't use And it was just constantly just shutting down stuff by just being close to them with those traits that actually really panned out for me. It was a dumb game. Like, it was a dumb game. But, like, at the beginning of the game, like, I've got a chance. Oh, yeah, we can totally do this. And then, like, none of his figures died. Almost all of them were dead. And I'm like, nah, I can still win it with just Iron America. We can. We got a chance. We can still, <laughs> like, he's on his last click. He takes a mystic. He dies. But okay, Calder. So I didn't, feel, I didn't feel bad about this because this was the game directly after the battle royale where calder yeah. stomped me and that was like i was like oh it's ca- it's like cosmic justice the, the the scales needed to be balanced and that's how it, it panned mm-hmm. out so you can watch calder on facebook or twitter just get just yeah wrecked. totally wrecked if you haven't seen that game go check it out on facebook or twitter if you did pop in the live stream and watch it thank you so much we really appreciate that that was awesome 
Yeah, that was really cool. That was really yeah. cool. That um, We put it ahead out on Facebook and Twitter that we were going to do the live stream at like 9 Eastern. We had multiple people that were like, oh, I can't wait to see this. And yeah. Then, man, yeah. it was like on – like on point, the second we started, and people started jumping in on Twitter and on Facebook. I was like, "Man, this is awesome! I'm yeah, really glad. I'm really glad you guys are here for this. Especially, it's like our one off live stream for this. So, un- oh yeah. Unfortunately, because we'd never done it before, I didn't know what like video settings and stuff. So I think like on Twitter, the video settings were not good, and it did not look good. But at least you can see some. Uh, some Captain Americas Some get dice their rolls. face stomped in. Ah, like, so mean. Probably watch it on Facebook so you can see a better quality video of it instead of Twitter, but it's it's there. Uh, the next game that we had actually was the single most frustrating game that I have had in forever, uh, which almost, quite honestly, tipped the scales, the cosmic scales, back in Calder's favor because of the absurdity of this, and it was because I used the Justice League Unlimited, complete with the Batman con exclusive, the Batmobile con exclusive, yeah. um, and that was versus... Connolly, yeah, it's <laughs> I was like, oh, I was going to say something else really cool, but no, it was uh, Kyle Rayner, Magneto, uh, Lobo... And then I had to fill out some points for the Cosmic Theme Team. So I had Grandmaster and three Mansion Rings. So, yeah. So, long story short, I didn't have the the Wonder Woman because every time I tried to buy it off she of, like, out. cool stuff, she was always out of, out of out of stock, so I couldn't buy her. So uh, I had all of them except for her. That was my team. And I was, I was genuinely... I think part of it, this game is just we like rolling dice. So at the beginning of every turn, I was rolling for the Justice League Unlimited trait like five times and then Superman's leadership. So it was like six rolls at the beginning of every turn just for funsies. I was like, this is, I like this. This is good. And then Lobo happened. Hey, Lobo's a pretty great guy. Don't you don't talk mean about him. He's he's the last of his kind, Chris. That's so rude. I'll let That's you so tell rude. I'll let you tell him what actually happened. But suffice it to say, I did a really good job of getting Loco, Lobo down to his stop click. Stop click. Yeah. And then what happened, Calder? Then you just you just abandoned yourself because you just couldn't roll seven. That was hundred percent it. For some reason, you're just so bad at rolling dice. Can you're, you explain your the luck trait? is terrible? No, it's a oh, special yeah, defensive yeah, yeah. power. So the special defensive power, which I've got memorized because of how bad Chris is at just everything, <laughs> is stop toughness. When Lobo would be hit by an attack and the attack roll isn't a seven, the damage is reduced to zero. So he takes no damage unless you roll a seven, Chris. Okay, so he has a fourteen defense. He has a fourteen defense. So you're you're gonna hit, but you you have to roll a seven to actually KO him. After the fifth attack, I was like Calder. Yeah, I was like Calder. You should definitely tally these. So he literally got out a pen and paper and he started tallying how many times I failed at rolling a seven. How many was it, Calder? So after the, like, 11th tally or so, Chris was like, make sure to put a tally down, make sure to do okay, and he's, like, rolling his dice, and he's like, whatever. So it took a grand total of 20 attacks on Lobo. He died. Chris killed Lobo, but it did take 20 attacks to get him off that one click. It was a pretty cool turn when I used the Batmobile to, like, I running shot, I attacked Lobo. I popped out Batman. He landed next to Lobo. I punched Lobo in the face. Yep. Then I free action used the freaking Batarang to attack Lobo. And it was like, I'm, I was doing damage. And then, like, multiple Oh, of dude, the- your rollout was on point. You're like, boom, ejector seat, Batman, throwing the Batarang, and boop, bow, punch. And it's like, yeah, Lobo just soaks it up. Okay, keep going. Whatever. It was like two of my characters had flurry at one point. So it was like, how do you get to 20 attacks? without the rest of your team getting destroyed. Well, I just had the ability to do a bunch of attacks is what it came down to. But yes, it was 20 legitimate reductions to zero that Lobo lived. It was the most absurd thing ever. I was like, whatever. Now, I, I told Calder after this was over, I was like, at least I killed Lobo. You know, like if I didn't yeah. kill Lobo and you took my entire team out, then I'd feel like super, super salty. But at least at like, you know, if we were in the final hour I did finally roll a seven. I killed a Lobo, and then Calder sweeps the rest of my team. Yeah. So at least I got the Lobo. What can I say? Kyle had collected all nine rings or nine all monster cans. Like, he's such a Kyle. Good old Kyle Rayner, just destroying people left and right. Uh, I did like that. Like, you totally went through Magneto. Magneto, 
never made an attack roll. Like, he never hit at any point in that entire game. I was like, man, this 250 Magneto just sucks. And then you pop, you popped him on his last click, and I was like, okay. And then I pushed Magneto to death, and I, like, killed three or four people. It was awesome. Magneto did more damage after he died than he did while he was alive the entire time. And that was pretty great. This is true. Also, uh, because of Zatanna, like, the good synergy between Zatanna and Jon Stewart, it was dumb. Because he can pick range combat expert, and then also those stupid bats, plus her perplex, yeah. equaled, I had 13 attack... And I was hitting for six damage every time I attacked with Jon Stewart. I liked like the cannon noise you made, like, doo -doo, or, like whatever. <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention the sound effects. Oh uh, yeah, 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 we yeah. were talking about uh, game two with John. John's like, do you guys always make sound effects? Yeah, like, when I was yes, we make the, sound the, effects. The jet up, I was like, no. Like, he's Captain America, Mar so like I'm moving Infinity Four. It was like. <laughs> like the game is so much better with sound effects guys oh 100 is. Right. It totally is. just have fun with it whatever so yeah there were more sound effects in all of these other games what, what, as well. what sound effect is the, the mastiff make oh i was trying I, feel, I was like i didn't actually do it the entire i forgot yeah. to do it during the live stream but i was like trying to do a freaking elephant sound like but it, it was way too hard not really important um <laughs> the last game that we ended up playing uh, was today actually, and that was Shi'ar versus the X Men. Calder was like crazy nice, and was this like a Christmas? Pre was this a birthday or a Christmas present or something? It was Christmas. It was Christmas. It was Christmas. Sent yeah. me. This is after November. It was the um, the WKO. Yeah, WKO, prizes. Uh, Manta, Hussar, and uh, Gladiator. Gladiator. Yeah. Now, Gladiator MVP. I'm just gonna oh. let you know. Uh, but so I, I recently bought bec the Lalandra from the old X-Men set, the one where you can teleport the team base and stuff. But I decided to be nice enough to not actually run the Shi'ar on the team base. I just ran them all as individual pieces. And Calder, you ran the X-Men. What would you have? So I had both Headmaster, Wolverine, and Cyclops. I had Brood Professor X. I had the um, Age of Apocalypse chases, both Jean Grey and Iceman. And then to round us out, I decided let's get some all new, all different X Men in here. I had Thunderbird. Um, I almost said Warpath, but no, it's Thunderbird. I had Thunderbird, Storm, Colossus, and the Nightcrawler from that Uncanny X Men set, um, along with. Uh... No, wait, yeah, that was it. That was it. So that was like a six hundred something point, like seven hundred point. I want to say team is what we we did. It was six hundred point game. Something like that. They didn't really add up to a good total no. amount. I had the exo specs on the Lalandra, so I think it was like a, a denomination of fifty. I can't remember what the hundreds amount was. Yeah, it was like. something weird, but it was it was based on fifty. So that was a pretty great game. And in almost any game, I always like to try to go for a pseudo alpha. Like if Chris got to move up first, like whatever. I wanted to get one really good attack off the first turn. I tried to do that with Lobo, and I think did Lobo hit? I don't remember, but like I. I I think I Lobo, Lobo missed, but... Like, all the way out there, and Lobo missed. And then I was like, okay, that's all right, whatever. So then I TK up Cyclops, get a bunch of perplexes into him, running shot him, sidestep, whatever, get him all the way across the map to try to shoot Gladiator for a whole bunch, and then he rolls, like, a three. And then uh, then Cyclops just die yeah. next turn. Yeah, between... Because Lalandra is dumb, because she has enhancement, and then also she has uh, plus one damage because of her power, and then that Gladiator already had four base damage yeah and it was like that and a shiar guy is all that it took i just annihilated cyclops on on that first like second turn for me um, he's so not good at 150 he's just way too many points for, um for what he does yeah yeah that's kind of true but it was the rest of the game was actually really close like starbolt died was, immediately yeah. you did a pretty i got one really good support off on from smasher and war uh, Starbolt, he just, he died, Warbird died, um, I can't remember what the other stuff, Hussar basically died, Manta basically died, and I was just running the map with, uh, Gladiator. It was like Gladiator oh, yeah. and Lalandra, and yeah. then I landed on that last stop click with him where he has 12 attack and 5 damage and gets the confidence tokens, and they don't actually go away, so all you have to do is, like, keep stacking confidence tokens, and it's perplex, like, times 3, so I was, like, running around, like, yeah, yeah, it's probably like eight damage or some stupid crap if I wanted, or I can just add it to my hypersonic speed. Or it was just stupid. So it came down to basically Warstar and Gladiator 
versus Headmaster Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. Man, that Wolverine could stick around, though. So I was really happy with the way he performed. I that hit that awesome. thing so many times, yeah, and you did. kept regenerating yeah, back did. again. I was like, all right, we'll just keep hitting you with Gladiator. Snick, snick. So that so th- actually, I never rolled for Blades. I'm kind of a huge wuss when it comes to Blades Claws Fangs. I'm like, no, nah, I got three damage. I'm yeah, good. so that actually was a very close game. It was an, and, and it was so thematic. I don't normally play X-Men a whole lot because there's not a lot of X-Men. Oh, really, it's expensive right now to try to play X-Men. Uh, so I really enjoyed playing X-Men. It was awesome. I like the bamf, bamfing around with Nightcrawler. That, that's just yeah, fun. That was your sound effects, yeah, really. Right. <laughs> um, but that was actually a really, really close game, and I think it was a really good game it to awesome. end on end since on, that yeah. was our last one instead of like a, like a shutout entirely. And yeah. it was really nice. If that last game would have been the Lobo game, Chris would be like, oh, I was where? I was like, fine. Uh, uh, yeah, it was got to the point. I was like, <laughs> okay, that's not a seven. Oh, go, go figure. All right, that's not a seven. All right. Uh, I was like, I-, I hope you feel good about this, Calder. Uh, <laughs> I felt so good. <laughs> Uh, but oh, it was also on the moon. Like we, oh yeah, yeah, we did that on the the moon moon map. Yeah, so we tried to make the the maps as thematic as we could. With so the Avengers BC was fighting all of America on the Washington DC DC Blitzkrieg Blitzkrieg map. Uh, the the that one was on the moon with. Who were you just talking about? She are and X Men was Moon, right? And then the Batman, the Justice League team was in the Bat Cave. Bat cave. So we just tried to make the maps match whatever we except were. except for the cosmic entities. We were in Egypt or something. They can land in Egypt. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> they built the pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, yeah, but that's that's pretty much what we ended up doing as far as games. We had a lot of fun on just our, our personal games oh, and seeing yeah. the dumb stuff. My favorite thing is definitely the bringing back uh, the Living Tribunal that was awesome. with Eternity. Yeah. That was just so stupid how that happened. It was so unlikely, but it worked, and it was really fun. Uh, I think there's a last a couple things that are not game-related that we just we wanted to talk about because... We said we were going to talk about them. Uh, we did get to go to Dirty Frank's Hot Dog Palace Dirty Frank's hot dog in, in palace. Columbus while we were there. That was fantastic. And actually, John went with us to go eat. So that was really cool. We got to show he'd never been there and eaten at Dirty Frank's. So that was really cool. Man, those freaking hot dogs are on point. Oh, they're so good. They're oh. so good. Um, we did get to go out to dinner with uh, Jamie, Mr. Clicks Flicks, and uh, another guy that we ju- I just met. Did you you've known Mike or you didn't know Mike? Oh, I didn't know Mike, but he was cool. He was he cool. With him all day. Freaking awesome cool guy. dude. And uh, he hilarious. was hilarious. Oh my gosh. Jamie Jamie's roommate while they were at Origins, and we all went out to eat like Mongolian barbecue and stuff. Which like that. is basically a who hot for those who don't know. <laughs> just saying. Calder fell in love with one of the girls that no, was there. No, 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 It happened. Okay, and, uh, well, so that she was forgot cool. my egg rolls, so it doesn't matter. Um, the whole experience is ruined. While we were at Origins, uh, I did, so we got to hook up with some of the other content creators. Um, and, yeah, who? Uh, Edward yeah, Shelton. Who? Okay. Edward Shelton okay. was there, and not only I mean Edward's a really really cool and great guy, and it's great to talk is to he him. Though? He is, yeah. Is he? And then on top of that, just because uh, we we brought him on for the April Fools episode, if you guys remember back that far, after that episode got done, we were recording. We Edward and I ended up talking for like an additional hour and a half or two hours, and I let him know like what my plan was with going in the military and whatnot. So. When I showed up, he's like, hey, man, he starts asking me about, like, my move and because I moved and about the military. And he's like, hey, I've got some people that I want to introduce you to. Uh, They are former military or current military, and I think you should. So it was just like networking. It was really cool. We got to meet one of the – or I got to meet one of the other uh, teams that participated in nationals just to talk to them. There was a team called uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Oh, yeah. All military guys, super cool. Uh, Exchanged numbers with one of them named Mike Holloway. And it was fantastic. So that was really cool. And I appreciate Edward uh, hooking us up so that we can network. Also, uh, KJ. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You wanted me to say something? Yeah, no, KJ. He's an awesome guy. I've always, I've had the pleasure of talking to him a couple of times. And he is on uh, the team Phoenix Nest. Yeah. It's Firebird, something like that. Yeah. So he also 
former military, super willing to sit down and have a conversation with me and about all that this stuff right now. And you're hearing this, KJ, you're the best. Everybody, bring KJ some like some good food. <laughs> bring him some donuts. Leave the room right now. Leave the man alone, and then come back. Bring him a full size birthday cake. Uh, that was That's yeah. That that was really cool. So I appreciated all of those like meeting all those people, those interactions, and of course all of the advice that those gentlemen were willing to give to me. The last thing before we move on to the community section that I wanted to talk about was how we got to go to a baseball game here in uh, Indianapolis. Once we got yeah. back from Ohio, uh, we went to an Indians game. So Calder, you hadn't been to see a, a baseball game in, in years. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen any kind of baseball game. So it was really cool. So uh, the reason why we went is because I got um, asked by one my one of my sergeants to go and do a swearing-in ceremony on uh, the field. Yeah, you guys cussed a lot. What? <laughs> uh, you're so dumb. And uh, so that was cool, but we all got into the baseball game for free. We got, f- like, food. We ate some pizza and hot dogs and brats and stuff. So that was really nice. It was a really nice day to go and sit and watch a baseball game. So that was another cool experience. That- I scored a pretty sweet hat. I was pretty excited about that. Yeah. I got a hat for my dad, so that's awesome. I so. appreciate that. All right. Well, that was good stuff. That was it. I I think that's basically. Actually, you know what? I forgot. Yeah. Shout out to Clixing uh, It Clixing It YouTube channel. I met the guy there. He was super awesome. He really uh, supported our show. Right so, on. Yeah. Shout out to Clixing. Hey, thanks. Check him out on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's all I got in there. So I think we're going to go ahead and jump into um, the community that's section. Oh, uh, but first, we should probably let you know that Dial H does work off the value for value model. We appreciate you guys jumping onto our Patreon. You can earn your heroic titles, and you will certainly hear some of those heroic titles here when we get into our community section. So let's go ahead and do that. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Every week on Facebook and on Twitter, we like to put a Community Tuesdays question. This week's Community Tuesdays question was, what is your least favorite sub-theme from a set? We linked a cool... Me and the boys. That's meme. a great meme, by if, the way. If you guys, guys. want to jump on there and look at those, more likes. That was an awesome <laughs> meme. Uh, do you have a Do you have a least favorite sub theme? I do have a least. Well, favorite What is your least favorite th- sub? It, it might be based on the meme. Actually, it was uh, it was Spider Man and Earth X. Because to me, there's never been a sub theme that felt more like nothing to do with the set. And Spider-Man and Earth X. All the villains and everything had so little to do with Earth X. And I know for a lot of people it was a selling point or blah, 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 blah. I know that's why WizKids does sub-themes for people that don't care about the main set. But for me, that totally took me out of it and honestly kind of ruins a slight amount of the fun that I had with the Earth X set. I, the, the one that I remember, I guess, is probably going to be planetary, but only because they only made like four characters or three characters with that keyword. I'm like, why even do this? Like, maybe this was just me. Like, when my father was raising me, he just straight up said, if you're not going to do something right, then just don't do it at all. So don't make the planetary keyword, Chris, and your hero, Chris. And WizKids is like, yeah, we just like doing everything half-ass. So they just made three characters. I just didn't understand that. So do you want to jump over to the Facebook first and see what we got going? Absolutely. So we had David J. Gaffney, and he said he'd have to go with the bad guys. It's only from the uh, Kick Arse set. But every villain technically a bad guy. Just saying, the reason they're the bad guys is because they couldn't use the actual name in like from the movie. Have you seen uh, Kick Arse Two, Kick Butt Two? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, you can't call them that. You definitely can't call uh, them that in the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, that's fair. Uh, the first answer I have on Twitter is going to be from Tristan Campo said, anytime the justice league or Avengers gets used, that's not, that dude, that is never a that's sub not theme. A sub theme maybe. <laughs> maybe except for in the Batman, the animated series. Oh yeah. That set. was, yeah, I would say it actually was kind of a sub theme. Uh, that one. He said, I love both teams. It's fine. I just want more creativity like DC vertigo sub theme or a Howard, the duck or Modox 11 sub theme, something like that. Yeah, I totally understand. All right. Uh, super fan Eric cave said Spider-Man was selling point for me. And I thought, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we know. Um, number two was JSA. I thought it was a nice experiment seeing how low to the floor they could go on points uh, in JW, Joker's Wild. But it was my least desired bit. Uh, the JSA was like 30, 40 something point figures, and they were totally meant to be run as a team. Um, and then number three said a sub theme that was criminally undeserved was Mutanimals. All of two of them got that keyword, and um, all of them had a TMNT ally. The keyword might as well not exist. I'm 100% on the same camp because I actually really like the Mutanimals. And I'm like, we're, we're never going to get these. 
Yeah. It was so it was yeah. so disappointing. That's almost ranking up there with the Squadron Supreme and how we'll only get five of them like ever. So that was that was really disappointing. Uh, back to Twitter, we had Vigilante Mr. Clicks Flicks who said Wakanda from the Black Panther said, just because they made the trait and generics kind of bad, in my opinion. I guess it's my fault for getting hyped for that keyword and having unrealistic expectations. See, I actually disagree. I think we talked about this on the podcast before. It was very much like a white weenie thing where they just boost each other just enough that, yeah. you know, you take out one individual piece, it's not a big deal. And they all boost each other enough that it's kind of a threat. Like, when you're running right. around with characters that are, like, 40 points that can hit for 5 damage, okay. Yeah, because there's, like, nice. multiple yeah, ones good. on there. Like, it's not bad. So, I, I thought that was a good sub-theme, actually. Benjamin Umansky said, the 1 million BC, at least they'll never make a phoenix. Sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, protagonist Benjamin Umansky. <coughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> they, they better make a phoenix. They better make a, <laughs> they, they better make a phoenix. I have 6 of the 7. Uh, we have Loyal Miller, who said, I would have to say I dislike most sub... I dislike most subset. The worst thing of late is the Avengers... Oh, mo- he likes dislikes most sub-themes entirely, I think is what he's saying. Uh, is the Avengers Black Panther and the Illuminati, Illuminati set could have made three separate sets featuring each of these things, but instead you combine them and leave out characters. So Illuminati, Avengers, and Wakanda could all have been their own right. sets. I think the worst part about the Black Panther set was that it was not really Black Panther, the Avengers, and the Illuminati, but it was like Black Panther and sort of, and then a whole bunch of cosmic people. I don't know. I think there was more Wakanda in the set than you. I know, but it felt like there's way too much cosmic stuff. There were like three generics alone, and then there was also like five, five or Those six are or all in the common, uncommon seven slot. named characters. Who cares? It means they're easy to get. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, so there was this community box uh, that people just started throwing. It wasn't too full the first day, right? No, it wasn't. No. Uh, because everyone was, like, keeping the pieces and things like that. But as the Battle Royales were going on at Origins, this community box started filling up with all of these dupes that nobody wanted. Well, guess what nobody apparently wanted? Any Wakanda keyworded characters. So I went over to this box, and there was this woman who was kind of like operating the box, I guess. She was just volunteering and collecting all these pieces. And she's like, yeah, when I get done, I'm going to go over to the Cool Stuff booth, and I'm going to sell it back to them for like probably like five bucks. And I was like, cool, I guess you're making five bucks. I was like, is there, is there anything in here? Uh, and she's like, do you want anything in here? And I was like, actually, do you mind if I take some of the pieces out here? I started looking. I, I walked over with like 20 generic Wakandan characters. Like 20 generics. Generics are good. I like, know. It's so dumb. I have like an entire Wakandan army right now. Oh I, I can't wait to use them because they're all like 15 and 20 points a piece. So, That's so nice. That was pretty cool. Uh, we have an answer from Citizen. Uh, maybe. 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 I don't know. Maybe. Bueller. Bueller. Uh, we have a, we'll we'll start here. Abel Alvarado said X Statics from Deadpool and the X Force. Dupe was not bad, I guess, but the other others were hot garbage. Oh, they were terrible. But I thought that was their thing. Was they were so laughably bad? Maybe, maybe not. I guess. I don't know. Uh, we had Peter Marshfield on Facebook. Personally, it was my most favorite, but uh, least because the figures are so barren in the game. This would be the Serpent Society. So many characters, so underrepresented. Curse you, Wizkids! Now that's why the Captain America said it's going to be awesome, guys. They're, they've got to put the Serpent Society in the cap set. I hope. <laughs> we'll see. Please. Citizen Chris Kurtz said, All of them, since they aren't the power pack. <laughs> All right. Really, what is your sub-theme if it isn't just the power pack? Every sub-theme. Like, should be the power pack. It really should be. How many versions of the power pack do we need? I know. I've got an idea. Since WizKids is completely comfortable with adding keywords like Illuminati onto characters that they do not belong on, like Professor X from the animated series, let's just start throwing power pack onto everything. DC, Marvel. Yeah. Hell, we'll throw it on WWE clicks. <laughs> Why not? Power pack. <laughs> There's the power pack. Okay. Uh, we had Kari Sampson say, sub-themes are usually what get me interested in a set more than the main one. But my pick has got to be the Titans in the Wonder Woman CTD set, since they were all, like, three Teen Titans in that set? Were there only three? There was, like, two versions of Raven, two versions of Flash, and then, I like, maybe a Starfire, right? Like, there weren't a lot. There, there really weren't. It was pretty low. A lot. Um, we have an answer from protagonist Ben Jones. It's our man in Australia. One of our men, because uh, Chris Rizzi is another one of our men in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah, likes yeah, to yeah, jump yeah. on. And- yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably tell Calder he's wrong because he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> he just hates America. So anyways. Ben Jones said, I actually like this theme, but it's something that seems messed up. He did link a picture of the Serpent Society. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he said, Serpent Society. Got some in Superior Foes, then another couple in Deadpool, but they don't have the sneak attack trait. One in Thor, one in Battleworld with the trait. It's too spread out for my liking. And you're absolutely right. I don't understand why they are doing this. Like, they have this slow drip of Serpent Society, and it's like no one was even asking for a Serpent Society, let alone the slow drip of Serpent yeah. Society. So even if you were of the mind, you're like, I actually like the Serpent Society, and there are definitely fans out there, you can't even make them happy. Who are you no. making happy by releasing one of them at a time? No one. Oh, dude. Uh, Matthew uh, Palacios, I hope. Uh, I know it's a big draw to new players, but dang, there's a lot of Avengers. And he's kind of right. He's kind of right. <laughs> Fair enough. Super fan Christian Bogan said, Godwatch from Rebirth. There is a total of four Godwatch keyworded figures ever. They are all in Rebirth. Downstairs mix up with kids. <laughs> Jeff Pullier said, Sub themes often don't even make sense with the main set, like Alpha Flight and Invincible Iron Man. And sometimes they cover something that I just don't care about, like the Metal Man, like ever. But the worst was Teen Titans in the Wonder Woman Gravity Feed. Now, I actually like the Teen Titans, but a Gravity Feed with a limited character list to start with doesn't need a sub theme, and to make it worse, they weren't very good. Thumbs down. I want to go back to uh, Superfan Christian Bogan's tweet because he clearly put time into this, and I actually laughed out loud when I heard him or when I saw this. He put a response to his own tweet that was so many hashtags that I thought it was super stupid. Hashtag Superfan. Hashtag Twitter Army. Hashtag Why Kids Why. And then it started getting more ridiculous past that. Oh uh, hashtag give someone above uncommon rarity the keyword if you want to make it work. Hashtag seriously though enough is enough with the hashtags. Hashtag we need more Batman family. Hashtag who reads these anyway. Hashtag you're a trooper if you're still reading hashtags at this point. Hashtag dilates for hero clicks. Hashtag America's butt. Because that was mentioned like two episodes ago. And hashtag penguin wah! And then just because it was in there. You see my downstairs mix-up? Yeah, I didn't ask to see that, did I? I'm all grand. <laughs> what am I going to do with you, man? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Kick me off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Todd Butcher says, was it Elseworlds that had planetary? Three figures total, but it was on the boosters. That was dumb. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Cody Williams said, funny enough, that sub-theme is what I cared the most about for Earth X. He's talking about the Spider-Man oh, sub Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, David Herberger said, my least favorite sub-theme is any TMNT set without a Mutanimal sub-theme. Oh, yeah, that's every set. <laughs> <laughs> they hate Mutanimals. All right, how many, how many answers do you I have? I have one left. I have one left. We're so insane. You started We're out, so too. Good. Oh, my God. Okay. Wait, that means oh, you have one left. That means you beat me. Yeah, probably. By one. better. Dang it. <laughs> we have an answer from Vigilante Collectible, who said, EarthX was such a great set showcasing classic Spider-Man characters. Bummer that it had so many weirdos from EarthX. <laughs> you better watch your mouth. I'm coming. All right. Uh, Michael Link said, hey, I like the Sinister Six in this set. Though they belonged in a Spider-Man set, and it was super strange they were even in there. So at least somebody agreed with me because uh, I'm right. Because uh, they totally didn't belong there. And to go back to Christian Bogan's America's Butt comment, Tommy Lytle, I really appreciate you, man. A little far, though. I better watch your hands. Just saying. Just saying. As, although it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, Community Tuesdays. We do have a Jedi, Cl uh, Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week. Help you, I can. <clears throat> Take you to your destination, I will. All right, so something happened this tip that I don't think has happened before. We will get into this. I will read the tip first. Um, I'm going to leave out the example, and I'll explain why. So the tip is the rules have always been replace and then modify. So remember, especially if you're going to do some shenanigans with perplex or whatever, you say you are going to running shot, right? 10 speed, go down to 5, plus 1, it adds it to the 5, it would be 6. Okay, now, that one, it would end up being 6 in either one, because that's just a basic example. Yeah. But there are certainly other things in the game that will change based on whether you replace and then modify or modify and then replace. So, the rule is always replace and then modify. Now, 
the reason I'm not talking about the uh, th- the example that he gave is because for the first time ever, and Jedi De- Legend has done a fantastic job of bringing us tons of examples of his tips every week. For the first time ever, he was incorrect about something. Now, that's not what we want to point out, not the fact that he was incorrect about something. People make mistakes all the time. We certainly make mistakes all the time, and I'm actually going to correct a mistake that we made on the last episode because someone corrected us, and we're going to show you the the dichotomy between what we're talking about when we're talking about the um, um-actually guys versus legitimate members of of our community that's actually awesome. So, uh, Jedi Legends tip, uh, his his example was wrong and then you get this random dude that's like page 18 when calculating a value and blah, blah, blah. okay yeah he was incorrect and this guy is correct by correcting him so he's right there's, yeah. there's no argument about that he's right but i said congratulations jedi legend you got your very first um actually guys so i just we wanted to give you a nice round of applause you got one you finally joined the uh the club so Everyone out there, if you are going to write into someone to let them know that they are cor- they are incorrect about something, I, most people can absolutely take the correction. That's not no one's feelings are hurt, but there's just certain ways you should do it. So don't do it like this guy. This guy is not part of the community. He's not even following us on Twitter. I don't even know why he yeah. just jumped onto a random thing just to correct it. He never has like jumped onto the Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week ever before. Yeah. It just oh, he found the example of what he needed to correct, and he jumped on it like so he could feel good about himself. I guess I'm right and you're wrong. Yes. Yeah. So that's what the know. internet is for, I guess. Um, is it for anything else? Yeah, it actually is. No way. So that is how you don't do things, and then we'll show you an example and how we are incorrect. We'll totally take it with stride. This is how you do correct someone on the internet. Go. So, the other day, the other day, when we were talking about all the new previews from Origins, we said there was going to be a new version of Taskmaster. Well, what we didn't know is that he's already made in Heroclix before. Uh, Michael Stoner said, nice recap of Origins, guys. One minor correction, though. We have gotten that uh, Udon costume, is what he calls it, on Taskmaster before. The original Explosion Taskmaster has that costume, since that was his current look in comics when it came out. And uh, he just has his hood down, is what he says. So... Yeah. Okay, 100%. Thank you, Michael Stoner. You were absolutely right. I was incorrect. We'll take it in stride. Absolutely. And we appreciate it. It was constructive. It was part of the thing. But he's been part of the community before. For sure. That's the thing. He didn't just feel a necessity to jump on just to correct someone. And he's never been there before. I think that there was a precedent of him being there is is kind of the point. (laughs) So there we go. We're just going to keep on moving on. We did have a birthday we do week. have a birthday, Chris. Um, we also have a uh, Malcolm Rush question block. Which one would you like to do first, Calder? Um, you want to do Malcolm Rush? We can do Malcolm Rush. Let's do it. All right. All right. What is Malcolm Rush's ah. question block? So Malcolm Rush went ahead and he wrote in that he wanted us to make teams based off our names. So let me give you his example. Uh, After Nationals, here's a fun thing for you to do. Make a team using letters in your name. Now, please tell them what it would be and how many points it'll come out to. So his name, for example, spells Malcolm. He has Medusa, an aim blue squad, Lockjaw, Crystal, Ox, Lex Luthor, and Medusa. So it spells Malcolm, and his team comes out to 395 points. Uh, If you do this, please tell how successful your team was. So we did not get the chance to play these teams. Uh, we've just been playing too much, too many other pieces that we definitely wanted to play uh, right. before we did something crazy like this. And this is a super fun idea. So if anybody out there wants to run this on your guys's venue, the only thing is that it based off of somebody's name, it's going to be very restrictive on the pieces that you can use and the point totals don't really add up very well. Yeah. So we didn't really have a point total to work off of exactly but i did decide to have a little fun with it i tried to stay within the earth x keyword and so k-r-i-s is how you spell my name i went with the 120 point king britain followed by the 30 point red union jack 
with the 125-point Iron Man and the 30-point Spider-Man. Now, King Britain and Spider-Man both have different point value. Well, they have different characters, and then those different characters have some. They're Spider-Man. They're Spider-Mans. Or oh, yeah. Spider's Man. That, Spider's that one. Man. So I could have used either one of those. So the point fluctuations could have been in there, but it would have been somewhere around like 300-ish points. Uh, but at least I got the Earth X theme team off of yeah. it. So I thought that would be kind of fun. So I was going to, like, once I saw that Archon was there, I'm like, oh, I can use Archon for the AMI name. I was going to make a Warrior one. Then I got to the Street Fighter set. And me and Chris kind of realized I could spell, like, pretty much my whole name with just Street Fighter characters. So, uh, to start off, we have uh, K-A-L-D-E-R is how my name is spelt. It is, we have Ken, Akuma, Fei Long. So, we're just using the long part of Fei Long. And uh, if that just hurts your brain too much to use, we can always just put in a Leonardo instead for the L. And then it goes DJ, E Honda, and Ryu. It was so close to being perfect. Oh, it was so close. We, we, we had to cheat a little bit. With, There's no L in Street oh, Fighter. No. <laughs> we did cheat a little bit, but I thought that was really fun and thematic that you get your whole Street Fighter team basically yeah, it was off, awesome. of your te- off of your name. So if anybody out there can run that and at least think it's fun, uh, if it's not too much of a headache, that might be a fun idea and get you guys through yeah. another week. And by the way, this Street Fighter team c- comes out to a nice 585 points, which means it's probably the worst 600-point team you could possibly <laughs> build. Yeah, probably. Uh, we're going to go to the birthday. You got a birthday, Chris. All right. Whose birthday is it, Calder? We have Benjamin Umansky. His birthday is on June 17th, which just so happens to be today. Today! So here's your sexy, happy Arabian birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I know. I know. It's been a minute oh, since. It feels so good. <laughs> mm. There's that. All right. Uh, and then the last thing that I had for the community on my side is going to be an update to the Dial H home base initiative. While we were at Origins, uh, we were talking to some of the listeners. And as we said, Emily. Emily oh, yeah. Emily wanted to claim a venue. Emily is from... Oh, can it always <laughs> stand in the blood? The almost. The he goes. almost knows your national anthem. Yeah, I tried. Uh, so she did say she didn't understand why we are not breaking Canada down into the provinces. This is a very good question. Here's the explanation. Uh, we didn't have anybody that had even claimed Canada. Not yet. So... Uh, what we were going to do is we're just going to let Emily have Canada right now, and she is based out of a uh, venue called 401 Games, which is in Ontario specifically. So we're going to let you have Canada until we get another listener that is outside of Ontario claim yep. a different venue, and then we will start dividing Canada out amongst uh, our Canadian listeners. So as of right now, Canada is claimed for Emily in uh, 401 Games in Ontario, Canada. Right. Was Ohio taken yet? Uh, I don't think. So. I just remembered I got a write in. Did you? Yeah. I just totally. Uh, we're so we're so good at this podcasting. So you guys good. have no idea. <laughs> like, number one, Emily. Uh, thank you so much for giving me a maple. She gave me a maple candy. I totally forgot. Did it was you really? Fun. Yeah. She gave me this little uh, maple candy right before we started playing. I'm like, oh man, she's trying to throw me off. She's trying to throw me off my rhythm. But it was like so good. It was so delicious. Oh, I was so excited. It looks like Ohio is not claimed. All right, fantastic. So Peter Zachary said, hey, guys, thank you so much for the ranking up in title. Oh, and then I forgot his title. What? Uh, you're the worst. I'm so bad at everything. Anyways, uh, while he sadly is not in Ohio for Origins, uh, he did want to claim it. So, I got it. All right, what's up? We don't have a soundbite, by the we way. We should, we should probably oh, have yeah. a soundbite for claiming territories, like a, a flag-staking soundbite or something. Do I, you I'm, know? I, I don't know, but... <laughs> uh, so he's going to claim uh, uh, Ohio for Dement- Sorry, Diversions Gaming in Newberry. Okay. Diversions Gaming in Newberry, Newberry. claimed for Ohio. Well, claimed for Ohio. Thank we, you, Peter Zachary. So, by the way, I'm looking at the map right now. If we can get three more states... We will literally have a line across the United States 
uh, continuous lines of states that are claimed. Nice. We still need Missouri, Utah, and Nevada. Nevada. What? Yeah, Nevada. Sorry. <laughs> ne- Nevada. Nevada. Uh, and then we can have it in an entire line across the United that would States. Be awesome. One continuous be line. We will literally stretch from sea to shining sea. <laughs> If we can do this, that is so corny. I know. That is I so figured good. you. I figured you like it. it. No, I love it. That's awesome. From sea to shining <laughs> sea. No, everybody's like Calder. Why? Why is he singing in this episode? Literally, no one has asked for you to ever do that ever. I know. I'm sorry. At least, at least we had fun while we did at it. At least we had fun. Hey, Chris, is is Britain claimed at all? Uh, England. England. It is not. I thought Britain. Well, I'm from. Yeah, I forgot start. to tell you about that. Our uh, concierge at the hotel was totally british and obviously uh he's like what's the last name and i was like uh britain oh please don't actually it's jedi legend please write us in and tell us how bad my accent is right now because i'm totally oh yeah (laughs) so so he's like what's the last name and i was like britain he's like that's not the britain i'm from i was like yeah i'm pretty sure it's french he's like it's actually a pretty beautiful country (laughs) It's like okay. Are you in time for the gaming convention? Yeah, I was like, yeah. Are you He's like, I play Magic the Gathering. Magic the <laughs> it's like, okay. And I said, oh yeah, Magic. I'm probably terrible. It's like, oh, I'm not very good at it either. I'm like, oh, he was such a such a character. That guy. Some random concierge in the middle of Ohio so from great. yeah from, from England. I'm like, so awesome. what? Okay, so that was an. Example of a thing that happened while and we were there. He's not listening to this, but I do want to apologize for him because we pretty much made fun of him the entire time. I wouldn't say we made fun of him. We uh, just but like, like every time someone said your name, we were like, "What? So over it? Where I'm from?" <laughs> like we, we probably repeated it way too many times. And need be that, and I can't believe you've done. I can't this. believe you've done this. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm done in the community section. Do you have anything else we'll sign off? Yeah, I'm good. I just want to say I love you guys so much. Thank you to everyone who said hi. Thank you to everyone who we got to hang out with. And it was just awesome. I It really makes me want to actually show up and play Hero Flix more. Yeah. Like go to events. It was so great seeing everyone. And I'm so thankful for all the continued listenership and support that everybody gives us. It was fantastic, guys. We really appreciate it. And you can follow us at Dial H for Hero Clicks on Twitter. That is the number four on Facebook. We're almost at 800 likes. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks. And you send us an email. We get those from time to time. Uh, Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. And as a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. My, 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 my stuff.